We'll call the business meeting to order. Today the committee will examine two bills. S 1853, the Bridging Agency Data Gaps and Ensuring Safety for Native Communities Act, otherwise known as the Badges for Native Communities Act. And S 2365, the Healthcare Access for Urban Native Veterans Act of 2019. On June 13, 2019, Senator Udall introduced S 1853, the Bridging Agency Data Gaps and Ensuring Safety, or Badges for Natives, uh, Native Communities Act, which was referred to this committee. Senator Cortez Masto, McSally, Murkowski, Smith, and Tester are original co-sponsors. The committee held a legislative hearing on S. 1853 on June 19, 2019, at which the Department of Justice and the Department of the Interior provided testimony. Congress has attempted to increase interagency coordination between federal, state, tribal, and local law enforcement agencies over the past several decades. Among the other things, the Badges for Native Communities Act addresses this issue by seeking to consolidate and streamline fragmented case information and data systems when certain crimes are committed in Indian country. This bill will address statutory barriers and codify tribal and administration initiatives that are improving the efficiency of data sharing between law enforcement agencies, especially in the context of missing and murdered indigenous persons cases. S. 1853 will require the Attorney General to have cases involving missing persons and unidentified remains automatically entered into the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, NamUs, a federal database that allows law enforcement, medical professionals, and the public to collaborate on solving missing, murdered, and unidentified persons cases. The bill will Codify the Department of Justice, <coughs> excuse me, Tribal Access Pilot Program, which enhances the ability of tribal governments to access, enter, and obtain information from federally maintained law enforcement databases like NamUs. S. 1853 also directs the Comptroller General to review the Bureau of Indian Affairs and Federal Bureau of Investigation Evidence Collection Practices for cases originating in Indian Country. The Comptroller General is to look for similar evidence collection problems encountered by state and local law enforcement agencies that have assumed federal jurisdiction over crimes committed in Indian Country. A substitute amendment has been filed to S. 1853, that is KEN 19581, by Senator Udall, who will speak to this shortly. This amendment incorporates extensive input and technical assistance from the Department of Justice and tribal stakeholders. I support this amendment and urge its adoption. The second bill that the committee will consider is S-2365, the Health Care Access for Urban Native Veterans Act of 2019. This bill was introduced on July 31, 2019, by Senators Udall, Moran, Rounds, Smith, and Tester. Senators Duckworth and Sinema have also been added as co-sponsors. The committee held a legislative hearing on this bill on November 20, 2019, where wit the witness Witnesses testified in support of the bill. The purpose of S-2365 is to provide uniformity to the reimbursement process that the VA and the Indian Health Service agree upon for health care services provided to Indian veterans. Currently, there are 43, excuse me, 34 urban Indian organizations in 19 states across the country. These organizations provide health care services to an estimated 150,000 patients per year. The Indian Health Service provides funding to Indian Health. The Indian Health Service provides funding uh, to tribally operated facilities and urban Indian organizations to provide services to American Indian and Alaska Natives. Section 405 of the Indian Health Care Improvement Act requires the VA to reimburse the Indian Health Service, Indian tribes, and in, uh, tribal organizations, excluding urban Indian organizations for services provided to eligible Indian veterans receiving VA authorized health care at one of the three named facilities. S-2365 amends Section 405 of the Indian Health Care Improvement Act to explicitly reference urban Indian organizations to be eligible for reimbursement from the VA for authorized health care services provided through an urban Indian provider for eligible Indian veterans. By these organizations being added, parity is provided with the other organizations receiving approved reimbursements. And so now I will turn to Vice Chairman Udall for his opening statement. 
Thank, thank you, uh, Chairman Hovum, for calling today's business meeting to consider two, by the, two bipartisan bills I've been working on, S-1853, the Badges for Native Communities Act, and S-2365, the Health Care Access for Urban Native Veterans Act of 2019. Both bills put forward common sense solutions that address public safety and health care barriers in Indian Country, and they will help ensure federal resources reach Native communities more efficiently. Briefly, I will also note that I filed one amendment for the committee consideration today, a substitute amendment for S-1853. This amendment reflects important technical feedback and comments from tribes, Native organizations, the Department of Justice, and the Department of Interior. I was also pleased to work with you, Chairman Hovind, to improve the bill. My amendment and the bills we are voting on today are proof that our tradition of reaching across the aisle and across Senate committees works. Thank you again, Chairman Hovind, for scheduling this business meeting and for working with me to achieve our shared goal of improving tribal public safety and health care by advancing these bills. I look forward to working with you to get these bills to the Senate floor and enacted into law in short order. Thank you very much. Yield back. Thank you, Vice Thank you, Vice Chairman. I also want to add that Senator McSally was added as a co-sponsor to S-2365 as well. Thank you. Uh, any other opening statements? All right. Then we'll turn to consideration of S-1853. One amendment has been filed untimely since the amendment was filed outside the 48-hour window. This rule may be waived by myself with the concurrence of Vice Chairman. Does the Vice Chairman agree to waive the rule? Yes. Okay. Do I have a motion to consider amendment number KEN19581 filed by Senator Udall? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed signify by saying nay. In the opinion of the chair, amendment number KEN19581 passes. Now turning to the bill, do I have a motion to consider S1853 as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Is there discussion? There being none, all in favor of the bill signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, say nay. In opinion of the chair, S. 1853, as amended, passes. Now we will consider the second bill. That is S. 2365. Do I have a motion to consider S. 2365? So moved. Is there a second? Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the bill signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed signify by saying nay. In the opinion of the chair, S2365 passes. With that, I want to thank members for getting uh, the business done in an expeditious way. I ask unanimous consent that staff be allowed to make technical and conforming changes. And with that, if there's no further business, we are adjourned.